Miami. 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 It feels like Miami. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Miami Heat Beat Post Game Show. I'm your host, Giancarlo Navas. And uh, I'm going to be joined by Alf in a second. Alf had a quick uh, quick plumbing issue, a water thing that he has resolved. He will be here any moment now. But I see all of you in chat. Listen, the Miami Heat beat the Memphis Gri- Grizzlies. Um, it would have been an easy win. It, it was going to be a comfortable win. And uh, everybody got a little too casual with the ball. And it uh, became a lot closer for a game than I think any of us would have wanted, right? It was 108, 102, Heat win by six, whatever. Uh, but a lot of you in chat are like, G, Rant, Kyle Lowry, this and that. Guys, that's what Hall of Famers do, man. That's what Hall of Famers do. They they they, they do that. They, they, just, they just ball. He was great. 17, 11, 9, a steal. 57% shooting from three, four of seven. Six, uh, five of 11 from the field. My guy killed it today. Ethan Skolnick tweeted out that the Heat had won the game and then they gave up a huge loss. It's okay. They, 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 they reeled it in. Ethan deleted the tweet. He did what he had to do. We all got through this together as I'm waiting for my co host. Shout out to Lenny Lester for the tier one sub. Listen, it's a celebration. I'm not writing solo. I was going to be here in a second. Again, he had to take care of something real quick, but we're going to get this party started without him. Guys, Jaime with the game-winning shot as I'm joined by my co-host, Alf. Listen. Wait, hold on. I got to fix. You just jumped into this shit? I'm not ready? Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we were live. We were going. Okay, wait. I think I'm good now. He's good. He's good. Oh, I'm good. I'm bad. Chat's happy to see you. Alf. Are they? Wow. Yeah, they're they're fucking they were excited. Euphemism for wonder, resubscribe to tier one, blamed Ethan for the injury to to, to hero. That's not even fair. Uh, uh, what did Ethan do? Yeah, I mean, well, Ethan did tweet out that the Heat had won when they were up eleven and then they blew the lead. So, you know, he, he had a little culpability tonight. He did delete the tweet, but hey, listen, Alf Jaime with the huge shot. He got the closing nod. Over over Highsmith. Highsmith was even at the score table ready to check in the game. Wow. He had a steal, stayed in, hit the biggest shot of his career so far, biggest shot of the game. I fucking love that closing lineup that they had off. It was Duncan Robinson, it was Jaime, it was Kyle Lowry, it was Bannon, it was Jimmy. That felt like a good win. I know Memphis isn't like the best team, but that felt like a that felt like a win that they needed. And that felt I, I feel good today. No, that felt like a good win. Um I was frustrated again that we blew a fourth quarter lead, but you know what? Like when you both blow a fourth quarter lead on the road, um, I, I'm more forgiving of that. And honestly, look around the league; a lot of teams are blowing fourth quarter leads. A lot, like a, a twenty, a, like a 15, 12 point lead is no longer a safe thing in today's NBA, right? Um, so, like, I it, the fourth quarters stuff bothers me right like i'm not gonna act, i'm not gonna sugarcoat it it's bad right but what I, but i'm not gonna over I'm not gonna over you know worry about that with, with this this early in the season but what i would what i will say is what you just talked about with that closing lineup what i love about that closing lineup is that there's four guys there that are completely interchangeable to me kyle duncan Jaime Highsmith, right? Um, you have you have your Bam, you have you have Bam and Jimmy, and as long as you have three of those other four guys out there, I'm super comfortable, right? Because like I love Kyle, um, I think Kyle's played really well this year, um, but there's times like his scoring just he's not giving yeah. you the scoring punch you need, right? Or on defense, I think like faster faster teams, faster teams, bigger. Not, I won't even say bigger teams. Faster teams, yeah. right? So you, you there, there's times like I wouldn't have been mad tonight if they brought Highsmith in and took Kyle out, right? Um, or if they brought Highsmith in and took Duncan out and had Highsmith and Duncan, uh, if they had Highsmith, JJJ, and Lowry in there alongside Bam and Duncan. So without Hero in, you still have three guys 
that you should that you completely trust in that closing rotation. What has been the frustration for a lot of Heat fans is those guys have been mostly healthy this year. Yeah. But we've chosen to close with Drew Smith or Josh Richardson. And I'm not going to get on Josh Richardson yet. I'm not going to do it. We'll I'm save that for the end. <laughs> I'm going to wait. Let, let's get, let's get to the happy. Because they, they want to they yeah, stick with the happy. So let's so what I do like is even without Tyler Hero, you have six guys on this team that you trust in crunch time, right? And you, like I feel like I like, you know what I wanted to ask you? Yeah. On this heat team, who do you trust? Like when you when you look up and down the lineup, who do you trust? Jimmy and Bam. Well, Jimmy and Bam, I think. Implicit, I think Tyler, Tyler, to. Tyler's, Tyler's earned it, and I think for sure after that it gets dicey. I think I trust Kyle, but I understand there are nights that you can't. I think I trust Highsmith. I'm getting to trusting Highsmith more, and I'm getting to trusting JJJ more. But Alf, that's a that's a great question as we bring in uh, Siobhan, uh as a, a very very close up. Bon, I, let, let's let you piggyback off that question from Alf. Who on this team, like, what are the players outside of Jimmy and Bam that you trust? That me personally. That you, that, that you, I Siobhan like, Bezlo, trust, yeah. Me personally, I trust Haywood. I trust Ame. You said out of Jimmy and Bam? Outside, outside, of, of, outside of Jimmy and Bam. I trust Kyle. I just, I don't know that I trust Kyle's body. I trust Kyle's mind. And I trust his, his know-how and his experience. But I'll say Kyle, um, Triple J, and Haywood, for Alpha. sure. What about you? I Alpha? trust Duncan too. I trust Duncan too. No, so I, those are the guys. It's yeah. it's Jimmy, Bam, Tyler. Okay, like I'm not you. You're not gonna get me to say a lot of bad things about Tyler after carrying this offense. Um, you know, like one of the things that was uh, annoying to me was I was like, if they win this game, people are gonna be like, oh, how, look what they did it without Tyler. I'm like, because Jimmy decided to wake the fuck up. It ain't yeah. <laughs> like not in the four today, though. That yeah. man just clocked in, and I mean that that one lazy ass three. Like that was so, a Friday like, at four, dog. That was Friday yeah. at oh four. Oh my god, my man mailed that shit in. So, I, like, I trust Jimmy, Bam, Tyler, right? I trust Kyle. I trust Duncan. Mm -hmm. I trust Highsmith. Mm -hmm. I trust JJJ. I trust um, them. I just do. And then after that, it gets dicey, right? Like. I don't trust Kevin Love all the time. I like Kevin Love against two big lineups, right? Like when you could camp Kevin Love out or get a big, like just a stiff and just like let him just do this thing. Lopez. Like a oh, Brooke put Lopez a, put a body, type, you know, put a body on him. Like tonight, if Steven Adams was out there, well, they I like, play two I like that out, for Kevin they, Love. They play Biombo and and Jaron Jackson together. And credit to Jaime. Jaime was able to kind of be physical and they rebounded well against that lineup. Like that to me was huge because they, I feel like they can play Jaime against the second big lineups. Maybe not everyone, but for sure, yeah. you know, that was promising tonight. Yeah. So to me, so they do have guys they can trust my, and then Caleb Martin, when he comes back, I trust Caleb. When is, in the, yeah. First of all, I trust Caleb in any role, but I really trust him in the right role. And right yeah. now you have two guys in high, in high Smith, and Hawkes that can that can take that four, no, that uh, that four position right. Um, so to me, like when Caleb comes back and he can play the backup two, the backup one, he yes. can play as a guard. It makes yeah. me it makes me trust him a lot more. Like some a weird Alf says, Caleb at the two. Yes, um, yeah. Caleb at the two is where he needs to be. So I like I'm very excited to see Caleb back in here next to guys like Hawkes and next to guys like Highsmith. But like. I, like what boggles my mind is who Spo's trusting. The line, that's, like that's the Eric Spolster special, baby. It's wild, yo, son. It is fucking wild. I'm looking at the box. You gotta right test now. it out, though. You gotta test it out. You gotta see what you but, can get no, early. No, at this point, at this point, like even and I'm not even talking about over the course of games. I'm talking about tonight. <laughs> like we saw how bad Josh Richardson yeah. was. He pulled the plug though. He he pulled the plug. When? In when? the third quarter. No. In the fourth, early in the fourth. Early in the fourth. Yeah. yeah. After that disastrous third quarter, he pulled up. where my man somehow 
and 16 minutes was minus 16, he started him in the fourth quarter. And the thing is, like uh, Sean Rochester uh, from Five Reasons Sports tweeted out the other day, Spo doesn't have other options. Bullshit. Like, let's yeah, stop. Does. Let's yeah, stop. There's a lot of fucking I like the options. Drew minutes more than Josh's minutes. Bro, and I'm you- – and I'm so glad that they went to that. They just said, Josh, sit down. Duncan, get in. You're playing with Drew. And then that that was until Kyle got in the game. And here, well, here's my thing. I'm not I'm not a fan of Drew Smith. But Drew Smith and Jay Rich in this economy? Yeah, together, <laughs> together, together? Was, together was rough. At the same time, with inflation the way it is, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> like, like there, there's certain things. Like, listen, I'm not going to be the one who says I'm smarter than Spo. Because I'm not. Spo is a top five coach of all time, in my opinion. But like, sometimes, and he's not five, and he's not he's five. Not. Sometimes we get way too fucking cute, way too fucking cute with what we're doing. And right now, Spo is getting too cute with the Josh Richardson shit. Like it's a wrap. Like we're it's done. Like the loyalty is gone. Like bring back Justice Winslow if you have the feels. Hey, 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 yo, <laughs> the feels. Hey, yo, <laughs> I'm about that. I'm about that. I, listen, I agree with you. Like, I thought Josh closing Siobhan in the Laker game was a little strange. I thought Highsmith probably deserved it, particularly because it was against LeBron. Tonight, I agreed with the I agreed with the lineups. They even changed. So yesterday they would they started the fourth quarter, and they typically have without Jimmy or Bam on the floor, without Jimmy, Bam, or Tyler on the floor. Today they started with Bam opening the fourth, and Jimmy came in around the 730. Did Bam mark. play did Bam play the whole fourth? He sat so. like a second because he picked up okay. a weird foul, but or the, no, that was at the end of the third that they sat him, and then he started. The, he played the fourth, so G, I I we, like that. G, I don't want to keep harping on Josh Richardson. I'm sorry. I don't no, no, I'm just saying that I I like no, the lineup change. J, to, JG yeah. in the chat says something, oh. and this is something that people been coming at me with a lot. With he was like, I'm gonna go back and find. okay. J Rich started the season injured, and in a new more on ball role, it'll take time. Let me explain something. This is what I came on the stream for. <laughs> Let me fucking explain something. Were you here in 2018? Were you here in 2019? 2017? Were you at the Duffy's we, watch party? Were you at the Duffy's watch party where I nearly threw strangers into a fucking pool <laughs> because Josh Richardson kept dribbling off his fucking foot against the Orlando Magic the first game of the goddamn year? That stranger Josh, was Frankie, by the he's way. He's in an on-ball role. Exactly! Why are you fucking, fucking putting Josh Richardson in an on-ball role? He can't dribble. He can't make decisions. He can't pass. He can't have you. This motherfucker looks like he's shooting a bowling ball. <laughs> a I thought Caleb's hitch. Bowling I, ball. What I are you Caleb's doing? Hitch like, what me the? Out. I, okay, I never liked his shot. I never thought he had a prettier shot. But what the? How the fuck do you get worse at shooting in the NBA? Like, how the fuck do you sit there? That's around, what Philly does to a dude, Alf. I mean, how do you sit there all day long? Like, if I sat here. All day long around motherfuckers, sharpshooters. Like I'm, t- like if I was if I was in sniper school all day long, and I got worse at shooting people <laughs> by the end of my time in sniper school. Like, this motherfucker's in the NBA, and he's gotten worse at shooting. Like he's doing this. Josh needs to train. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Just, he's yeah. shooting 16 pound bowling balls. He can't pass. He can't dribble. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. He can dribble because he dribbles for fucking 18 seconds out of every shot clock. Like, like stop. Stop with the Josh Richardson. Needs to get acclimated. Needs to get acclimated. The motherfucker's been in the NBA for 40 years. He's not getting better. What game is this for him? He's not about to improve. What are y'all talking about? Y'all sat there at the beginning of the season and said, Josh Richardson should start at point guard. You looked me in my fucking face and said that. Now you're like, oh, he needs to get acclimated. He needs more reps. Are you, he's, he's a fuck. he's on a vet minimum. This is game 507 for him. What the fuck are y'all talking about? (laughs) Grow the fuck up. I know you like Josh. (laughs) I know he's sweet. He's nice. He has a cute face. He, <laughs> like, he, he seems does. he seems like a nice kid. Yes, he but he's not. He's forty. <laughs> <laughs> y'all really sound fucking ridiculous with this Josh Richardson shit. Stop. Y'all played yourself in the offseason talking about Josh. No, let, let me tell you. I played myself because during one of my big coping fucking sessions, <laughs> I said that Josh Richardson is better than Max Struess. Right. I, I, like, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Tiffany Meeks. Like, 
I, I said that. I saw it a lot. I miss I miss Max. I said that. I said you're not gonna miss Max Schuess because you got Josh Richardson. But I also realized very quickly y'all were going crazy with the fucking start Josh Richardson at the point guard. Him and Tyler Hero will be fine. Y'all are fucking you're you're insane. You're fucking insane. And a, a lot of y'all have come back, have fixed it, and it, we, we and so have I. And we 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 but some of y'all are still on this nut shit that Josh <laughs> Richardson is a fucking point guard. Like, dude, th- yo, and I'm I'm gonna say right, now, motherfucker, he sucks. He sucks. He's bad. He's bad. The only time, the only score he had tonight was off of a cut and a little fucking reverse layup. Do that and only that, <laughs> only that. I can. Eight I'm reading game. this in her voice. <laughs> yes, Chad, I do miss Matt. Chad's also saying Kyle shouldn't be starting either, buddy. They don't have options. Stop it. They don't have options. Kyle almost had a triple Leave double Kyle tonight. Alone. Who was gonna start? Like that was my thing. Going into the season, oh, oh Josh Richardson, Damian Lillard. <laughs> There's only one st- point guard on the entire squad, the entire team. If As- we're being real, there's only two guards on this team that I think are are like NBA level players, like rotation players, and it's Kyle and it's it's oh well, and Tyler. I guess Duncan's a guard too, but you know he's no, the, to, no, they have guards. I'm talking forward. about what. It, I'm talking about point guard. No, right? I, I was even expanding it to just yes. guards in general because, like, Duncan's no, not really a guard. No, they have a lot of guards that they Caleb's play Caleb's not really a guard. Caleb's kind of a forward, but they, no, they can play Caleb's him at a guard. guard. Caleb's a guard. Yeah. They tricked you into thinking he's a power forward. They have you, guards. You Billy cannot Richard. trick me. <laughs> Siobhan, what is, what is Caleb Martin? Caleb is a wing. Caleb is a small three or a big two. He's not a forward. I agree. I no, he yeah. So small three, big two. Not a four. Yeah. So he's a so. But this, hey, we have I, two. A, we have two Caleb of those is, now. Caleb's a two and a half. We didn't have any before. Feels nice. And like yeah, yeah, people told me like Kyle shouldn't start. Who should start in his stead? And people were making a big deal when it was like Kyle expects to be the starting point guard. Who the fuck else should have expected to be the starting point guard? <laughs> they didn't expect that to wasn't be the starting take, point guard. That wasn't news. <laughs> of course, he should have expected to be the starting. Fun. If that you hold know that what way out. Alf, bon, it'd be like if you joined the Miami Heat beat media team and you're like, yeah, I expect to be the starting forward. Fuck yeah, you should expect to be the starting forward. No, it's like me you saying me I, off the bench. I expect to be the best <laughs> black male podcaster on Miami Heat beat. Because who else? What are we doing? It's me or Kenny and Kenny <laughs> left. I was going to say you or Joe. <laughs> <laughs> or you or <were> Leif. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the job. <laughs> Josh doesn't God. even Josh doesn't even use his athleticism well. Like Stinks. Josh doesn't weaponize his athleticism. He's not nowhere he near the way that Caleb does. Explosion anymore, Siobhan. Yeah. Like his after he got hurt his rookie year and he stopped dunking and I was like, oh boy, that's bad. He came off of a <laughs> curl, like he had a curling lane one time tonight, and he just like shallowed it into like this really wide kind of arcing thing when he could have just like spun, turned his. <laughs> Turned his shoulder and got into the lane. I was like, oh, man. His internet finally went out. Someone oh. asked, he's athletic. Who? Josh oh, Johnson. Josh. He's supposed to be. That's, no, Josh. That's, what? You know That's my grandfather they said. This was. You know, they, you know what else they told you? That Josh Richardson's a good defender. And let me tell you something. I've been saying this shit. This that. is my favorite Alf take. I don't agree with this. I've been saying this shit for years. That he is not a good defender, and I said it on the last show, yeah, he's did. an active defender. Alf, you've been saying be this on like for years. Uh, uh, he's not a good defender. He's always in the wrong position. He's, he's just, always in the like. Listen, give me the Duncans and the Struces and the uh, the yeah. just the slow, unathletic motherfucker. The Kevin Loves. I keep say, saying white guys. I feel bad, <laughs> but like well. the slow, unathletic guys that at least try to get in the right spot. And then they reach, but like Josh don't even reach because by the time it's, he's able to reach, they're past him. And I, he's on, he's like at the half court line because he took a really odd position, a really odd angle, and he's out of the play. Like he's not a good defender. I all don't right. want to keep like, – and then like the, the Memphis broadcast kept talking about Drew Smith and all, everything he brings Why are you, why are you watching the, the Memphis broadcast? Uh, because listen, Crotty was back, and it's very. It's, it was a election day. Was, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It election wasn't day the was Republican yesterday. I had, I had to take a stand. 
I'm surprised he wasn't at the Republican debate here in Miami. I would have been sure. Listen, he was I, I, I for that. fully expected that motherfucker to be in Hialeah. At the, at the, at the rally. I said uh, hey, listen, we we <laughs> love you, Crowdy. We uh we haven't talked about Bam owning JJJ today. 30 and 11. JJJ had five fouls. We haven't talked him. about it because that's not true. Well, listen, the, the, <laughs> the numbers, the numbers show. The agenda. I have no, so, uh, and we, Bob, you know, we gotta I, push this. I, I want to hear Bond's take on Bam's game tonight. Um, because I have I have my body. Um I he don't closed, know. He, that. Closed strong. he did what? He closed strong. He, he closed strong, and that Amazing. is a fine thing to say. He closed strong, and I think that's a that's that's a fine place to leave that at. Um I people feel how they feel about the mid-range. I I want him to take it. I just want yeah. him to continue to try to push the issue though and find himself at the free throw line. I'm I it's weird for me now. At, at 12 like, today, by the way. 12, 12 his, attempts. His 12 free throws? Yeah. 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 See, things like that. His 30 to me felt super quiet, but it's because of the 12 attempts. So I don't know that I really have too many thoughts on Bam's game other than kind of the way that he finished. And I thought he defended um I thought he defended really well. Even when he's beat, he doesn't give up on plays. I he feels every game he feels more and more like captainly more and more like grown and kind of mature, but I don't know. I, he didn't jump off of the screen for me today, but maybe I wasn't paying attention. In the fourth, he did for me. In the, in the, yes. In the fourth without question. See, I and absolutely like, agree with that. Like I feel, I'm sorry, G go ahead. No. And that's when they needed it. Cause like Jimmy yeah. was in, you know, four o'clock mode on a Friday and he, and he took the challenge and Alf, you had, I don't know if you tweeted this or you said this in a group chat, where you're like, Bamp's taking this matchup a little too personally. And I thought, in, and I totally agreed with you, but in the fourth quarter, I thought he did the right thing because when he had to pass, he passed, and he did, yep. and, and he was aggressive on uh, on Jaron. So, yeah, so I will say the first three quarters, I thought Bam out of bio played a lot of stupid basketball, right? Like, I think he scored some points, but I feel like he was, he really wanted to make a point about, yeah. The, what the the difference between him and Jaron Jackson Jr. and I feel like what the difference that we're talking about Bam is not on the offensive end. We're talking about the defensive end, and you're out here trying to do. Like, you're just acting crazy. Like he was playing really fast. He was trying to mm-hmm. do way too motherfucking much. Like it was like it was really like I, it was so out of character for Bam. And I didn't. I like. I'm like. What am I watching? Like. I, it, like you felt it, like you saw that he was trying to push a point. He pressing, was, yeah, yeah, he was pressing so yeah. much, right? So, but what well, I would say, right? So I was super angry at Bam. So even as bad as Jay Rich played, uh, Thomas Bryant played. All these, like one of the reasons that th- this game was close for so long was that when Bam came in, he didn't have the impact that he normally has because he was playing stupidly. But I will say in the fourth quarter, he turned that around a lot, right? The problem is they already had momentum, but I thought Bam played an excellent fourth quarter. I thought he took everything that the defense gave him, and that includes really good passing. That includes the little 13-foot jump shot. Whatever the defense gave him, he was taking. So he, masterful fourth, but I was super upset with him for through the first three quarters. And I want to correct a uh, previous thing I said. Bam had 16 free throw attempts. He went 14 for 16. Not, I think I said 10 or 12. So he he had much makes more even room. more sense. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, that's the one thing that on all our pre like positional preview shows, we asked a lot of guys like you got to step up and get to the line because it can't be Jimmy or Bus. And Tyler has answered that bell, and Bam has answered that bell. They have been aggressive. And going Jimmy to has basket. not. Jimmy has not. And to be <laughs> honest with you. Fuck it. I mean, whatever. I mean, he, he'll, I'm he'll, fine with it. It. he'll clock um, in when he has to, I guess. So the whole Thomas Bryant um, <laughs> thing. Yeah. Not a fan. What, where are we at? with? I that? want Lando. I just want Lando at this point. Just I like him. Bring me Lando. <laughs> just try it. Just, Shit. I just rather <laughs> have see if you have something in Lando than just run. The, I know what Thomas Bryant is at this point. We all see. Don't. You know what my problem with, uh, with Thomas? My. Okay. So coming into this, I knew Thomas Bryant was a really bad defender. 
Like I knew that, right? Yeah. But like a bunch of fucking nerds told me that <laughs> analytically on the pick and roll that he's elite and blah blah. blah Call John Jablanca out. I don't know. Was it John? I have no idea. I, like once the numbers Jablanca start, thing. I ignore who the fuck is saying them. All I see is a bunch of fucking calculators talking, right? And they told me how like elite he was in his limited minutes. Blah blah blah. This and that. Yeah, he can't play defense, but offense. So I thought that okay, <clears throat> he it, okay he can't. You know, he can't stop shit, but at least maybe, maybe offensively he can make up for what he's giving up defensively. Apparently, no. No. <laughs> First of all, he's so bad defensively. Like, he's a terrible defender. And then offensively, like, he just he's just not that strong. Like he, That's he, what it is for me. If he were stronger, if he were, like, stronger in his base, I would I feel like I would feel much different or some difference about him. Bond. He's so Carl big, Tiana's, but not strong. Carl Tiana in the chat says Kevin Love backup center. And that was floated to me uh, in a group chat by Rohan Narcarni. And I was like, I didn't even think about that. Like, what do you think? I, <clears throat> I, so who is the four next to him? I think, uh, I don't know, Shades. Off the bench? Yes. Oh, Jaime, probably. Well, then, Jaime, yes. Yeah. Then, yeah, I'm fine with that. It's going to be it's Jaime a different or, look. or, or uh, Highsmith. So or Highsmith, the, the, whichever one isn't, yeah. But <laughs> I, I see where you're going, and I think that it's going to be interesting with Tyler out because with Tyler in, you know, Duncan's going to be starting, right? So in the second half without Tyler, okay, they started yeah. Duncan. But, so that moves the rotation in a way that now Duncan's not playing with the second unit anymore, which – that was very noticeable to me that they they that second unit needs his shooting, so they gotta. That's another thing that they gotta figure out. But mm-hmm. they can play if you play Love there. You could play a couple more defense. You you could get away with playing some extra defenders with Love, and <clears throat> you can kind of survive that a little bit. So they're gonna I have agree. some some tweaking that they can work through. I agree. I I feel a lot better with that second unit if it was Love. Uh, like let's say it was Love, Jaime, and Caleb. You know, and then and then eventually you know, Duncan court. when Tyler gets back. When Tyler gets back, but if your front court is that's actually love, not a bad. That's not that's not bad. Yeah. That's yeah. that's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. Um. And, and you know, as long as Jay Rich is Tyler's nowhere out. to be seen, you know. <clears throat> yeah, and they're they're gonna be careful with the ankle. That's the other thing we haven't even gone to. Tyler it's Hero got his hurt. Ankles. Yeah, it's, he had he had an ankle injury. They're gonna they're gonna be careful with that, as they always are. So. I, I would expect that we won't see Tyler till mid December, <laughs> if that six to eight won, weeks. <laughs> gee, you you won by six, and Josh Richardson was a minus nineteen. Alf, they had nineteen turnovers too, <laughs> which they don't turn the ball over. Oh yeah, that's the a, fact that they won a road game that they turned the ball over nineteen times. That's crazy, and yeah. they should be happy. And they survived the minus nineteen of Josh Richardson. Yeah. That's a good win, bro. I don't care. I, you be, good, I feel good about that. I feel I feel yeah. better about this one than the Lakers win. And listen, the Lakers are a bad team. Not a bad team, but they're Memphis not a good team. Memphis is a bad team. They're winless. Memphis is a, Memphis Memphis is is a bad a good, team. And and Lakers are a bad team. Washington's yeah. not a good team. Lakers but, just got boat raced by Houston. Houston's playing defense. I get it. But boat <laughs> raced? Like, that, yeah. you're, not, you're not that good of a team. And, and the thing yeah. is, like... I saw Ramona Shelburne, which I mean, she might as well wear a Lakers jersey to work. Um, she was like, "They need a third star," and I'm like, "Okay." No, she said the calls have been put in for a third star. So these, so already LeBron oh, is like, but you know what pisses me off about that? The they master told... off season of Rob yeah, no, Malenka. no, not even the off season. Starting at last year's deadline, they yeah. they told me to my face. That when the Lakers amass a, a, a shit ton of mid, like they amass all the mid motherfuckers in the fucking league, and they were like, "Oh, we, look at all the mid the Lakers got <laughs> over the hill, no, over the hill no, veterans." They got that so much have, mid. Yeah. Look at all the mid the Lakers have now. They're title contenders, and then they went against the Nuggets and got swept. Right? You know what the funny thing is, Alf? We'd all still take Christian Wood over Thomas Bryant. <laughs> yes. I yeah. would, dude. Yeah, would. I would. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, we could fix him, even though it's like his sixth team in six years. That's crazy, dude. How are you first six years in the league? You've been on six teams. That's wild. That's no, remember crazy. in the offseason, they told me Christian Wood was, was uh, Pau Gasol? That's people what they like, told me. People are – Alf, I think the fans – Oh, you don't remember that? Who, who I never saw that? that. Was Pau Gasol? Chat, in please. In what way? 
No, yeah, I, re- I remember this. Chat, somebody, somebody bring up the N- NBA expert that said uh, that Christian Wood is basically Pau Gasol. Bro, we're getting Probably at the, the age that Pau mm-hmm. is like, Pau might as well have played in the 90s because that was so long ago to these kids. It's, it's crazy. No, and this wasn't a kid. This was a grown man acting stupid. <laughs> Talking about the Lakers basically added Pau Gasol and Christian Wood. And that's why, and like, I'm not... There are some Someone guys said the Richard heat. Sherman. Richard, Richard Someone said it happened on Richard ESPN. Sherman. Somebody said it. I'm not Richard Sherman, the football motherfucker. The football, was on, the football was on, motherfucker. Was on Undisputed with we got Goddamn Shannon Sharp and Richard Sherman really being the voices for the NBA. I did oh, see man. um shout out to Austin Rivers, who's now on ESPN now. Well, he and his dad both entered the workforce <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Which is really funny, dude. Come on, son. And he still works at the same company as his dad. That kid can't escape. Working with your dad sucks ass, bro. Well, shout out to Austin Reeves, who's supposed to be the third superstar. I don't get the Austin Reeves thing, bro. I saw, I saw like Raptors Twitter being like, "Oh, I, I, I don't mind Siakam for a, for a package for like Austin Reeves and some picks." And I go, "If you told them Tyler and picks for Siakam, Raptors Twitter would like bitch slap you across the world." And I'm Bro, like, what? So mad. Reeves? Y'all saw how bad they, uh, y'all saw they're mad at me uh, because of my take about Tyler Hero and why people don't like him. Oh, I did, yeah. You're not wrong though. Like I that's know, not I know, incorrect. I, I know I'm not wrong. They <laughs> mad because they, they don't like the way it makes them feel about could you, themselves. Could you tell and Tyler's people... voice was less flavorful? <laughs> no, so, a whole different I, so thing. for the for the audience that doesn't know Alf's Tyler Hero, uh Austin Reeves take. It was Tyler so, Austin and Kevin Herter. Tyler Austin, Poor Kevin, Kevin Herter, Herter dog. All, all right, why am the, I the white guys, the white guys, right? Tyler carries himself in a way, and somebody said that somebody thought I was being weird and racist. I'm like, okay, no, I'm saying how other people perceive this. Yeah, people look at Tyler and say they don't like him because he acts black. Like it's a literal thing. Like people don't like the fact that. Tyler got a little drip, a little swaggy. It's like Joe Burrow in the NFL. People don't like some of the things that Joe Burrow brings with him, right? So Tyler Hero, and I'm not saying he's code switching. I'm not saying he's culturally appropriating shit. I think Tyler Hero is who he is. And the way that he is rubs people the wrong way. People don't like that. People like Austin Reeves, right, who come out here, Looking like John Stockton in 2023, right? Hair looking like you sweaty know sweaty bangs, yeah, like just forehead. You know, hair looking like he he's he only goes to supercuts exclusively. Yes, right. Like they like the Kevin Huerters, whatever his name is, uh, who looks like he only goes to you know uh, sports clips, right? Like they like those guys. Like they like they they want their white American players to look like white Americans and Tyler Hero carries himself in a different way so yeah i said not gonna be popular opinion but people don't like tyler hero because they think he's a white boy that acts black also reeves and kevin where do it the right way they're just super white and get more respect because being obvious despite being obviously inferior players by most metrics like you can't there's not a lot of stats you can put up with kevin where um also reeves and tyler hero that makes those two guys comparable to tyler hero but they will stay telling you those two guys are better than Tyler. And then, so now you have to th- think, why? Why are we doing this? And the reason why, I think the reason why a lot of people are doing this is because Tyler rubs him the wrong way. Like, Tyler got the IG model Latina. Tyler out in Miami on boats, telling is with she, DJ Khaled. Yeah. Like, Tyler's yeah. doing, doing, way, <laughs> doing way too much ethnic shit. Like Tyler, like people don't like Tyler for that. And Tyler that, wears, fine. wears fabrics and colors and yeah. And he, you yeah. Know. Oh, oh, look at his hat job. on the sideline. Look yeah. at his hat. People, are mad. <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy, mad about his hat. The bucket like, hat. Yeah. Just what, what the fuck are we doing? Like you know what I mean? Like and I like Tiff in the chat. Tiff on the on the timeline was like, I've been to where Tyler's from. It ain't front. <laughs> Tyler, I mean, listen, yeah. Tyler is who he is, and like it rubs people the wrong way, and that's fine. Get over it. He um <laughs> he will also be missed. They they were gonna yes. miss 
boring and uh, Jimmy's going to have to clock in for more than six hours at, at his nine to five. I saw somebody earlier said Jimmy was in happy hour as Bam clocked in. Um, obviously, they're not going to be able to survive that. But listen, all in all, guys, a, a great positive win for them. They went, a, they went on the road. They have a really long road trip. I believe they have like their next seven of eight games Six, on the road. Something like that. Adam Silver's never seen the pearly gates. Uh, that's crazy. I don't I don't understand to start the season. Mode for that motherfucker. Dude, that's insane. Um, and Lord knows how many back-to-backs in that stretch. But they got that. Jaime, I, I want to close out on Jaime really quick because I thought, you know, he played great and we haven't touched on him and, and, and Highsmith and then we can kind of close this out. But guys, those two guys as kind of the their power forwards. Uh, Bond, we can start with you. Yes, please. Big time. Because they that's been the thing that has been missing. And every time they have a guy that's stable there, they go to the finals or they yeah. get close to it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> PJ, uh, Crowder, and any of those guys. So the yeah. fact that these are younger guys that they could that they're not gonna like leave because their contract is expiring and they have to be overpaid, I think is the most promising thing that this team has done in a while. Certainly. Fuck. So Hamish, I like a few weeks ago on one of the pods, I talked a little bit about like how Miami goes about kind of spoon feeding responsibility to their dudes to kind of get them warmed up. First it's defense, then it's more time. And then it's a little bit more responsibilities coupled with the defense. And then it's, you know, like it goes that way. And from the, the very insertion of Haywood into some defensive sets, whatever playoffs ago that was, it it let me know that, okay, this is one of the guys that Eric is kind of um, grooming or or working his trust out with. And the defense we've seen, the defense we know, the three, the shooting has been, has just felt so confident. I have no fears. I have no objections when he goes to get into a shot. And it's fun because it's not just in the corner anymore. He's above the break. He's at the break. And that allows you to have some more spacing around him. So you have the three, and the D, and I've been someone who's felt like um, Spo on Kyle's. Oh, <laughs> I'm someone who's felt like if 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 they can get some of the PJ type of actions and things out of um, Highsmith, things being like the short roll, that kind of little floater, the decision making in the lane, then that is the kind of the complete package of what it is that I feel like they've been seeking out of that position and out of that type of build. And it's been so, it's been so, he's been so huge for them. I think that's their starters for the rest. Well, Tyler, but had Tyler not gotten hurt, I think they would have, you know, been settled into their starting unit and fucking um, triple H. It's just the, the body was always going to kind of set him up for success. In my eyes, the fact that he did play for years, Collegiately, he's not your you triple J, right? Yeah, when I say triple H, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm weak. Right? <laughs> no, triple J. Oh. The fact that he got his full four years collegiately, he, he's not working through um, some of those kind of like early, like really young type of mistakey type of things. Great footwork, great feel, never ever in the way but somehow always where you kind of want him and need him to be. I'm super happy with the two of them. And I I think you're right. When we have stability and competency in the four ish model, we've seen them be able to um, put together a lot of good runs. And I don't know. I'm just really happy that the two of them are in the pipeline and I hope that they stay like ride with this. After bond, I, 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 I mean, completely agree with you. Um, one of the things coming to the season, I was like, they don't have a four. Um, because the four last year was Caleb and Kevin Love. Yeah. Um, and Kevin Love, I I Kevin Love, I love him to death. Like I love what he brought to the team as far as positivity, what he brought to the locker room. Yeah. I thought his three point shooting at times and like the He's way he could old. defend two big lineups. <laughs> like yeah. he did a lot, but he got a year older. OK, like we have to be honest about these things. It was like when Goron coming off the bubble and everybody was like, oh, yeah, we don't need a point guard. We have Goron. I'm like, Goron's getting old. Like, let's <laughs> let's let's remember, yeah. like, before he had six months off before the bubble, what he looked like. So the same thing with Kevin Love. What Kevin Love looked great when he didn't play for, you know, uh, Cleveland for three months. And then we got him. So coming into the season, 
if Caleb and Kevin Love were going to be your start your power forward rotation, I wasn't feeling good about it. But yeah. now that, like, I'm looking at tonight, 27 minutes for Highsmith, 21 minutes for JJJ, right? For I love that minute. Big minutes, I, yeah. 25 points between the two of them. Between the two of them, they're a plus six. I, I honestly, I, I attribute all of Jaime's minus six to Josh Richardson, so it doesn't count. Um, like they just are solid at that position next to Bam the entire time. Yeah. So now with like switches because I thought they had a good uh, backup for five. Now I'm worried about the backup five role, and I'm always worried about the point guard role Endless because I'm trying to tell Kyle Lowry we don't have one. But it is good to know like you literally have, and I, I maybe I'm sounding crazy. You have a young rotation of PJ Tucker and Jay Crack. Like yeah. you have two guys. The, what I would like to see from both of them is a proclivity to shoot the three a little bit more. Like Highsmith has been on fire from three. Yeah, I want Jaime to. Contend, I don't care how many he misses. I don't either. He has to shoot it. Shoot it. <laughs> he has to shoot it. Right. And for me, for me, like it's Haywoods. So the three, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm him attacking closeouts is so big to me. Kyle was great tonight. G, so proud. I think Haywood attacking closeouts and on some dunking stuff, being over-rotated, being overplayed, and being able to make decisions, get in and move that way. It just it helps the offense continue to stay in a type of flow. I'm just – I'm super happy with, with them, man. You know what's wild? I tr- when, when, when Highsmith releases, I trust it almost as much or more – than when Duncan releases. Like, I, Wait, those high, like when way? Highsmith releases at three. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I feel like <clears> so, <throat> I, 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 I have so much trust in him right now to hit that three pointer. Like, he doesn't hit it on the move like Duncan does because he's going to have to develop that once they start. Because uh, right now they're not respecting his three, right? So he's up, yeah. shooting a lot of catch and shoot wide open joints. Yeah. But once they start, he's going to have to catch, move, high reset. Smith? What's that? Highsmith, you mean? Yeah. Oh, but um, he, buddy, when that when they start respecting that shot more, oh, that's gonna make right. Bam and Jimmy and Kyle and and Tyler and all the all the guys are trying to get in the paint. No, so so, listen, man, I love it. I love it. I love I love when they put a guy like this this idea of putting a seven footer next to Bam. I've never been a fan of. What I like is putting a large body next to size. Bam. It just has to be size and, yep. and just strength, size just strength. and strength that can yep. rebound and that can shoot. To yeah. me, that's always – and that just can shoot because Myers Leonard had that size, strength, and could shoot but didn't want to shoot. And, and that's where he lost his minutes. Right. Like, yeah. you got to be ready to fire. Like, you got to you gotta be dumb with your shot like Jay Crowder was. <laughs> like, you no conscience, just shoot dumb I'm, shit. I like Jay. <laughs> I love Jay. <laughs> I like Jay. Like, you, you, just had to be, you just had to be ready to shoot. No matter what, whether you make it or not, you just have to. The defense has to respect it, and I like the power forward rotation right now. And I'm a big fan of Kevin Love being the backup five. Yeah. I think that's something that Spo should move to, whether he does it or not. Who knows? It's going to be exciting to see kind of where the. I mean, Jovic is still a guy that we have wonder if he's going to fit into the rotation. Not to get not I to mean, open that get, can of worms, but sure. But Tyler's out. Caleb's still yeah. out. You're, they're going to have to find some relief minutes. They're gonna um, they're gonna have time, and and other guys are gonna yeah. miss time. And Jimmy's gonna miss his yeah. twenty games all, all year. So we'll see, guys. Looking ahead as we close out, Atlanta, San Antonio, Hornets, Nets, Chicago, Chicago, and then Cleveland. They don't play a good team until November twenty second, which is Cleveland. That's. You know, I, I, maybe Atlanta is a good team. I don't know, but well, whatever. Yeah. They they have all these very like winnable games on the. I'll be on the road. I mean, this is a chance for them to make up some we ground. Home. Huh? Brooklyn on the 16th is at home. Yeah, that's the only home game I believe yeah. in that stretch. So yeah. I believe Cleveland's in Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah, all the home. rest of them are. Yeah. So they have this little stretch. They listen. They they've won three in a row. Huge for them. Are they? I believe they're 500 right now. Um, again, so they that's four and four. yeah, they're four and four. They got they don't have to play a good team for a while. G- get healthy, get kind of get these wins against teams that you know I don't want to call teams bad, but teams that you should beat. 
I need and six and three over the next nine games. I want seven and two. I, I so six and three is my minimum. Yeah, I, I want seven and two. You're good. You they should. Ooh, you know, what team are y'all talking about? Oh, I don't know. They're just good. Oh no, no, like, listen, listen. They're gonna go. They're gonna go five and five or some shit, and they're, they're gonna, gonna go lose four and six or five. What like bad? They're a bad team. Like, they're gonna <laughs> piss us off. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Like, and 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 they're gonna beat some good teams. Like, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to derail what you're trying to do, G. But the <laughs> the, the schedule to. talk, like, don't give me schedule talk. Did you see to. what they, when they when they were excited to play the Lakers, the way they played, and then once AD went out, you saw how they played. Like they literally stopped playing once AD went out. Like they played Plus, differently when AD left. Right? You see the way Bam like gets all excited for Jay. Like everybody's for uh, what Jaron Jackson. Right? They're agenda driven, bro. They're, they're, the most, so, they're, agenda driven. they're so agenda driven. So agenda driven. They're like it, they they relax in the fourth quarter. Like they're a badass team. They're bro, not even that good. Which is key. why I will always say, if they get into the playoffs, I'm not scared of no other Eastern Conference team. I'm like, not scared of Boston. I'm, I'm not, not scared, scared of Milwaukee. Boston. I'm, I'm not, not scared, scared of Philly. Of Bro, I'm, I'm not scared, scared of Milwaukee. I have people. We got Rohan saying Philly's good. I go, Philly's the same that they always are, bro. Shut no, up. Philly is good. No, Philly's playing better. They, all are they, they, all, the but they always <laughs> play better. And then when the game's better, and they're eating five. I don't care. Like, I'm not I'm not scared of none of these. Eastern I've seen them be the one seed and lose to the Hawks. You know, Listen, get at it. Come on. You know, you, know what, you know what I heard the other day? Boston has an historically great offense. Oh, Alf, I, my favorite song. That's I was like, Pacers. holy shit, where's Marty That's McFly? Because I swear to Pacers. God, I'm in a time machine. I, I'm, I'm back in 2022. Because I heard the same shit in November of 2022. They're playing the hits, dog. They're, they're Mariah right. Carey. <laughs> this is, a, this is a, the Mariah Carey Christmas version of the NBA. Greatest offense of all time. I hit every year. Oh, the best team in the league on paper. But like so to me, like I don't I've never been mad about the Heat at the Heat for not being good enough to win the Eastern Conference. Because as long as they have Spo, Bam, and Jimmy, they're good enough to win the Eastern Conference. And Duncan. And Duncan. The only thing my own thing has been, are they you good enough to win a title? And I don't believe they are. But like, listen, so that's why when you talk about the next few games, I don't care. They're, I'm gonna I, say something crazy, and we're gonna go the like three here. and six against all these bad teams, and then they're gonna hit a stretch against really good teams, and then go seven and two. I'm gonna say None something. Of it matters. I'm gonna say something crazy, and we can end the show here. I they they have no shot in hell against Denver, but the Warriors, they do. I don't know anybody else. And I think if, the Warriors if, can beat the Nuggets, which I'm gonna watch the rest of that game. If Jamal right Murray, now. if Jamal Murray is not a hundred percent. And, and I think the only team in the league that can beat the Nuggets are the Warriors, and I happen to think that I love that matchup for, for Miami. I fucking love that matchup. Listen, yeah. you know, you know, the only thing that scares me is the Nuggets getting back to the finals and Jamal Murray getting being healthy. <laughs> Steph Curry is a thin blue line <laughs> between that happening. <laughs> no, J- Jamal Murray's a fucking. Th- Jamal Murray's already hurt. He's, I know. He, he's out. Like, like, listen, he's out a month. That it motherfucker will, go, will, getting all the way scary. to like getting all the way to the finals. That guy's scary. They're all fucking scary. Jokic is they're just they're, they're just. But honestly, yeah. I like listen. If the, you, you're gonna bet on uh, the Heat against the Suns if they get all the way there, yeah. Why? Because I don't. They're just not about that. When everyone goes to, goes to a seven man rotation, they're not about and, that action. And three of them and three oh, of the motherfuckers is all stars. What has like, what has Beal ever done, bro? What is you know. I've, we've it's been. Real easy to be they've been a. They've been a better version of Duran in the finals before. Uh, LeBron may not be here. Yeah, D-Wade may not be here. Yeah, Bosch may not be here. Yeah, motherfucker. But we got Spo. We got Spo. We got Jimmy. We got I don't even know why we're talking about the finals. I don't know. Like, we really... barely escaped with our lives <laughs> against a one in seven Memphis Grizzlies. I get a text from my friend who's a Celtic fan, like saying, "Congrats on upsetting us and the Bucks again." I go, "Dog, we're in a dog fight against a Memphis team without Jaw." One in seven Memphis. One in seven Memphis. Well, guys, thank you for rocking with us here on a Wednesday night. Thank you for Alf for you promised me twenty going. minutes. I did. I, we, we had, we, we, I we wasn't even supposed to stay here. Because, yeah, but like I was supposed to be. Here, so don't get fired. Uh, we'll catch. Remember, guys, <laughs> mixed bag tomorrow. Tiffany Meeks hosts 
uh, mixed bag. Oh, tomorrow. you know what? I hope Tiffany's still in the fucking chat. You know, Tiffany has never invited me on mixed bag. Me neither. You know, I've only no, been, I've been on mixed bag once. That's not true. Like, never even invited me. Never asked. Wait till me you see's on tomorrow. Oh my god! Oh, I know who's it? on tomorrow. It's gonna piss you off. Tune in to find out. Tune in to find out. <laughs> I bet you was hot take, Harry. <laughs>